Okay, while they're going off, I'm going to get a bit of uh, gearbox oil and without trying to get it on those edges that I've just put sealant on, I'm just going to try and put a bit on this bearing. Because that's a very, very important bearing, obviously. And um, when we when the gearbox is going, and I, I want it to be uh, already have oil on it, uh, so it's never it's never running dry. Okay, now that the uh, well seal's had a chance to go off slightly, I'm just going to line the seal up there. And the thing about this seal is to try and get it in try and get it in square come on that's better just so it's flush with the edge of the gearbox casing. Good. Then we've got the spacer that the seal actually runs on. And uh, I'm gonna make sure we've got a little bit of oil on the outer edge because this is what the lip of the seal actually runs on oh yeah don't forget seals always fitted open side towards the oil okay so I've just got some oil on that edge because again I don't want the lip of that seal to be running dry yeah it always you always want an oil seal to uh uh, have oil on it from the very beginning okay that's good okay so we've got the spacer we've got the oil seal what we need to do now is to fit the gearbox sprocket itself okay so we've got the gearbox sprocket this is the old one uh, and the new one um, we decided to fit a 21 tooth sprocket because that gives quite relaxed riding but also enough acceleration and so you can pull out uphill, um, you know, two up without worrying about anything. Um, this is, the original was a 20, so it's going to be slightly higher geared, 21. Always worth um, replacing these as a matter of course, even if it's the same size, because they always tend to be worn. I don't know if you can look at this one, you can see it's slightly hooked. You see the angle on that side is much greater than on that side, it's hooked. You know, where it's been pushing the tooth over uh, and you can see that on quite a lot of the teeth they're pushed over that way much sharper angle much much more sort of vertical on that side so uh, always always these often tend to be worn out because they're such a pain in the backside to replace people will put a new chain on etc but they don't replace the gearbox sprocket so we're putting a new a new one on uh, which is a 21 which i think will give us the best gearing now obviously it's a matter of personal choice what i'm doing is i'm going to put a little bit of well seal on the inside of these splines and on the inside on these splines here okay so that um again to stop the oil sneaking up inside the gearbox bracket you know there's an oil seal there but the oil can come up these grooves and sneak out so i'm going to put some well seal on on the uh, sort of um, ridges, what are they called? Splines. So um, to try and prevent that before we before we assemble them. Oh, uh, now I'm putting the gearbox sprocket on now, so that we can hopefully torque up. This nut is done up to a torque of eighty foot pounds, massive torque, the nut that holds us on. This is a left hand thread 
I'll probably mention that again. I'm mentioning it now just to make sure I don't forget. So it's done up to a massive torque. Um, uh, but when we put the main shaft in through here, it sticks out to about there and there's no way you can get a socket on. There's no socket. Well, I haven't got a socket that's long enough to go over the main shaft and down to this nut. Whereas with just this high gear sticking out, we, we're okay. So if I can, I'll use my patent method, which I'll go through obviously in a minute, of locking the sprocket so that we can do that up to 80 foot pounds. Okay, uh, but first of all, we'll get the sprocket on and get the nut on loosely, and then we'll see if we can tighten it up with a torque wrench to 80 foot pounds. Okay, so I've put a bit of uh, well seal on the splines of the gear and of the uh, sprocket. So I'm just going to knock the, fit the sprocket now. There we go. Good. And then we fit the gearbox nut, sprocket nut loosely. It's dished on one side, flat on the other, dished because obviously the sprocket itself is dished. The main thing to remember is that it's left hand thread. So uh, yeah, let's see if it'll go on that way. There. There we've got it. socket and uh, there it's on loosely and now we have to torque it up to 80 foot pounds and I'll show you my little uh, device for doing that which hopefully will work how we can do it on the bench as I say I want to do it now because I can get the socket on when I've got the main shaft sticking up through, <coughs> the socket won't fit over. So um, I'm trying to do it on the bench now. Okay, here we are. We're going to attempt to tighten up the sprocket. Don't forget it's left hand thread. So what I've done is I've got my vise and I've got an old rear chain which I've put around the sprocket and I've clamped that in the vise. And then the vise I have then clamped to the bench. I'm not quite sure whether it's going to work because 80 foot pounds is an awful lot of strain to, to put on. And so it could be the vice pulls itself away from the grip, but hopefully it won't. I've got the torque wrench. You need a decent torque wrench that will also do left hand threads, as this one does. This is my dad's old torque wrench. It's one of the few tools I've got sort of left that uh, belong to me down so it's quite nice to use it okay oh and i've got some rag here because of course the gearbox is going to be pulled up hard against the vice as i do this and i'm just to protect the gearbox okay so you can see the gearbox being pulled up tight and you can see the vice attempting to lift itself off the bench it's an awful awfully tight 80 Okay, here we're going. I'm just watching. I just don't want the, the vice to leap off the bench. Come on. We must be at about 60 by now. Come on, a bit more. A bit more. No, oh, not quite there. Come on, can, I'm sure that we can make 80. Ah, we got it. Yeah, woohoo. That's tight. 80 is tight, but we did it without the vice uh, jumping off the bench, which I thought it was going to do. So, yeah, we've done that up to 80 foot pounds now. It's all done. So, I'll, I can take all this lot off. And uh, then all we need to do is put the lock ring on that locks that nut to make sure it's not going to come undone. There we have the, uh, I've got the uh, locking tab on. Uh, I, what I had to do is I just had to get my Dremel and uh, enlarge that hole a bit because it wouldn't quite line up. The screw wouldn't go into the, you know, I couldn't line it up with either the two screw holes that are available. So just had to cut the edge off to get it through. 
Uh, by the by, I was talking to Ashley down at Andover Norton, you know, about all the gearbox stuff. And he said that these are actually made of mild steel, quite soft steel, these screws. So that if you ever come to take this off and that's that's um, rusted solid, which apparently sometimes they are, you can just get a cold chisel and knock the heads off. And then you can take the sprocket off and worry about getting the thread out later on. Right, okay, so we're just checking. That's all nice and smooth. Check everything, you know, all the time. Don't don't wait until the end to check things. Because if something's not right, then you're not sure. You know, if it, you wait till the end and something's not right, then you don't know what where the problem started. Whereas, you know, every time you do something, check that it's working before you move on to the next thing. Great, okay, so we've got the sprocket fitted. Uh, we've got the cam plate and the quadrant fitted. So now it's time to uh, to fit the fit the rest of the gears. I'm going to have a cup of tea before I do that. But uh, oh yeah, I'm not sure if I did I mention before. I can't remember. But I've, I've also fitted these are new studs and that that I fitted. I waited until I I put in the um, bearings just in case they went away a bit. And then when you buy the new shell, the, the, it comes with these new studs and, and um, bells. Okay, so uh, right. Anyway, next job will be to fit the, you know, I should build up the rest of the gearbox after a cup of tea.